This is a cold cathode tube driver for a specific type of light used in vehicles called Angel Eyes, which is basically a little neon tube around the headlight. I'm going to zoom down this because it is a fairly small thing. And recently I was asked by a regular viewer, Nissai, uh, whether the text in it says LAMP 300mm max meant that they couldn't drive longer tubes. Well, the answer is you can drive longer standard neon tubes because the cold cathode tubes are usually the very super thin ones like this. This is a uh, folded U-tube. And uh, the ultra-thin tubes, as a tube gets thinner with neon, the voltage required over a specific distance goes up. So if you get... Well, I'll bring in another U-tube. Here is another YouTube. It's very big YouTube. It, uh, I'll just go like this. It, it's a huge YouTube. But this one is filled with neon gas. And because it's a much larger diameter, it requires a lower voltage. Now, getting back to this, inside, actually, you know, I'll show you that lit first. So I will zoom out. Something just rattled there. Is this loose? Oh, it is. The module's loose. Oh, that's interesting. I'll pop that out afterwards. I took the cover off just to show you the inside is potted uh, with a sort of rubbery compound, but it's basically, it's a Royer style oscillator inside. So tell you what, I'll just set this up uh, and show you this one moment. There we go. Glorious Neon running um, at, let's see what the power of this is. Uh, it's a 12 volt supply, 360 milliamps. It's about four watts approximately, although some of that will be lost in this little unit here. And the interesting thing is, you can actually double this up. So I'm going to try that now. But before I do that, I'll show you the circuitry of how the output is wired. And then we'll try doubling it up and see if we can increase the brightness of the tube. I shall just turn the power off. Get this tube gingerly out of the way. Because these are very hard to get now. With the progressive increase in this sort of neon, LED neon, it's kind of meant that... Traditional neon tubes are really hard to get now. It's something you should prize. If you ever see an old sign being scrapped, try and salvage some of the neon tubes off it because they're becoming very rare. I've put that over there on a piece of foam and I shall unplug this improvised connector. I shall also put the solder iron on because I'm about to cut wires. So, the configuration in these for driving two tubes is as follows. Let me bring in a notepad. And I shall zoom down onto it and sketch out what's inside these. The bulk of the circuitry is the Royer oscillator. I've featured these cold cathode supplies in the past, so I'm not going to cover the circuitry again. It is, if you look up Royer oscillator, you'll sign, find very similar circuitry. Where's my pen? Right here. So the main thing is that you've got the primary side with a feedback coil and you've got the circuitry on that side and then you've got the secondary side which is a high voltage winding. And that is wound usually on the little transformers with multi-split section bobbins. And that results in the voltage being divided along with barriers and it just means that it can run at higher voltage without flashing over in the transformer. The normal approach for these is either uh, to have two capacitors on one leg feeding the two outputs. And then the other leg just comes to two standard connections. And what happens here is they put the capacitors in series because that limits the current that can flow in each half of the cycle. And it, in, the case of, uh, in the case of this one, it's 20 picofarad. Now that's out. I may be able to, if I can get this out, came out very easily, I'll be able to access those capacitors and tell you what value they are. Right, I shall do that. But they have two capacitors, and what you can do is you can just bridge them together. So you only need one of these connections, and you can run a tube between uh, the two capacitors of that, and it doubles the current, because that would normally have been split between two tubes. But there is another configuration. You sometimes have the high voltage winding, and uh, that winding is sometimes configured as this. There's a capacitor going to an output. But there's also a fixed output going to an output. And then the other one also has, it's got a fixed output, and then it's also got the capacitor. And normally, with that configuration, you'd have a tube connected between these two, and you'd have a tube connected between these two. 
This is less convenient because you can't just bridge capacitors together. If you did, because one's on one side of the uh, transform, one's on the other, it just basically shorts them out. Um, if you've got access to the capacitors, you can change the capacitors on the board, though. This is just a, a single one. Oh, actually, no, this has got two outputs, but they've just uh, populated it. It's in that style. However, if you test with the meter between the outputs of these and you find that two legs, one of each side, are shorted together. Well, let's do that right now. Let's bring in the meter. Put it to continuity. And I shall show you this particular one has... So it's not that one. So we'll try the other one. So those two are shorted together. And that means the other ones when you measure them, won't have any continuity at all because uh, they're going via the capacitors. But this means we can basically just bridge the two capacitor outputs from this one and we can make that tube run brighter. So I'm going to do that right now. The solder iron is on. Kind of intrigued. I almost want to pause to look at those capacitors now. I'm so intrigued, but that's all right. I won't do that right now. The solder iron is running. I could measure the capacitors. If I was to just pair some of this off, perhaps, and get into it. I've just had a video to monetize, by the way. I made a short about an interesting circuit board in a... The, I shouldn't say things like that, should I? Uh, but it obviously detects things in the image. Is that going to be this video to monetize now I've said that? That'll be an interesting experiment. We'll find out. It's okay. It's a fairly specialist video anyway. It's a niche subject. It won't be popular. They never are. The curse of technical channels on YouTube. Uh, so where, where are we at here? I see a separator in between here. What I'm really looking for here is I'm looking for something that looks as though it could have a capacitor between... Say there and there and there and there. Let's uh, let's probe it. It's going to be in the region of say. I'll put it down to two nanofarad, which is the lowest range this goes, and it's usually the capacitors in these are super low value. It's uh, thirty-seven nanofarad. Is that even a standard value? Let's say thirty-three nanofarad, uh, picofarad, should I say? So it is super low value. Uh, thirty-three picofarad. Right, tell you what, let's chop these leads off. I could actually stuff things in the end, but I don't need to do that. I'm just going to chop it. I'm going to chop it. And I'm going to strip these. I could use a proper wire stripper, but it's silicon. It should be quite easy, he said, finding it wasn't quite as easy as he thought. Strip this like this. Also, uh, focus up a wee bit higher so it's a bit, little bit sharper, because it's focused down on the bench there. And then we'll do a little test again. We'll see which ones are linked together. And I'll just bridge them together so I know which ones they are. Uh, so I'm going to put this to continuity. And I'm going to bridge there and there. These two are linked together. So I'll twist them together just so I know what they are. And the other ones will... Oh, just out of interest. Just out of interest. What does the capacitor read through the winding? Can you actually do that? So I'll hold this onto here and I'll put that down there. It shows a skewed reading because uh, it's going through the winding, but it's not that bad. However, the main thing is that now these are our two capacitor windings. Incidentally, on standard high voltage power supplies, if you want to run multiple tubes in parallel, you can't just connect them in parallel. Uh, but you can uh, put a capacitor in series with multiple tubes or across the same electronic transformer, and it will usually like them all. It's a trick used to get more tubes lit at lower current. So I should get some solder. Solder. Solder is to hand. Just drop a little Americanism there. I think if I do any more videos on those devices that I just inadvertently mentioned there earlier on, I'll simply uh, make them shorts because then I'm not going to put too much effort into them if they're just going to be uh, demonetized. 
Because that's quite annoying when you put a lot of work into something and then they say, you get nothing. It's like going to work and putting in a day's shift and they say, oh, by the way, you're not getting paid. That's what it's actually like. Right, this is doubled up now. So we're ready to bring in that tube again. I shall turn the soldier iron off. And I shall get this stuff out of the way to make way for the precious, the precious neon tube. And I'll get the bench power supply on. I kind of hate handling these tubes these days because I'm always worried that every time you handle them, there's that risk of breaking them. Many unpleasant memories of the past, working with neon and venues, and occasionally a tube would break. I had a whole batch once. It was a new type of glass, and it wasn't sealing onto the electrodes well. And uh, the guy was blaming me. He was saying, no, you're breaking all the tubes because the electrodes were popping off them where it fuses on here. And I was like talking to him and uh, he said, no, I've never had a problem with them. And the, the tube he was holding right at that point, the electrode went pop off and he went, oh, right, I see what you mean. Good. I'm glad that happened. Otherwise, I'd have felt so guilty. Neon, very expensive and very, very easy to break. Right, so let's see how this goes. Is this going to make it even brighter? I've not changed the exposure, so it should give a good indication of this. Righty ho, so on it goes. Oh, visibly a lot brighter. And it's up to, it's only about 500 milliamps now, so it's gone up to 6 watts. Um, so that's not too bad. So technically speaking off one of these units, you could either run to uh, tubes at lower intensity or one at higher brightness. Now, to give you an idea, I'm, I'm going to pause and I'm just going to change this so you can actually see the brightness because the lights are swamping it out here. You see, that is a better emulation of what I'm getting here. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, and it's kind of important to know that these things, the little power supplies, tell you what, I'm going to bring the light back. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. The light is back, so I shall just power this off at the moment. But it's kind of important to note that I don't see the angel eye lights for cars being around for that long because the everything's gone to LED just as the signage has gone to LED and it's although neon used to be huge in signs and stuff like that it's become a sort of like a what you might call an art medium now it always was big in art but um, it's kind of going the direction that it's only viable to get it done as art because uh, everything else is just as I say it's just LED and that means that ultimately these little power supplies are going to be something that you'll want in the future if you ever come across a bit of custom neon. Um, there are still a few artisans making uh, tubes and putting them on eBay, by the way. Um, I shall chat with one, I think, and ask if he wants me to promote his uh, his wares. I'm not sure about that. But uh, he's making short sample tubes um, and putting them up there for sale. Um, but that's... Uh, this is the perfect power supply for that because it, you can plug it into a 12 volt power supply and just run them directly from that. Uh, and these are cheap because they've always been around. They've, they were a kind of mass produced item for those original cold cathode tubes that used to also be used in arcade games. I think Dance Dance Revolution, uh, dancing stage, uh, it also used to use the cold cathode tubes as part of the lighting. But there we have it. Uh, the the power supplies that are just getting rarer. Grab one now. Get yourself at least one of these just in case they kind of go obsolete. You also get them in 5 volt. Oh, there's another thing. One thing that will stop them going obsolete is the fact they're also used for these little tubes, the, the UVC tubes. That's quite handy. Uh, but that's it. Very simple circuitry uh, and you can hack them for the brighter output if you wish just by uh, metering the leads. Oh, there is one other thing. There is one. Bring the notepad back in again. You see this configuration? On this configuration, you'll be able to measure between these two leads that you're getting the resistance of the windings. I'm not sure what the resistance of the windings is. It's probably the best part of a thousand ohms or something like that. But you'll notice there is a, and if you get that, uh, then you can actually just take two leads off those two and you can put your own capacitor. Now, the ones uh, here are rated 
uh, in this case of this one, it was uh, 20 nanofarad, 3,000 volts. It needs to be 3,000 volts. Although it says 900 volts on this case, that might be once it's struck, but the actual strike voltage is higher, so the voltage does float higher, so it has to be a high-voltage capacitor. But it does allow you to hack and modify and get what you want for driving your cold cathode tubes. But that is it. That's all I have for you today, as the lock-picking lawyer would say. A neon tube and a very cheap driver.